Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to continue on with today, wrapping it up with a special selection. This one coming at us from Anton. Anomale Amaterasu Omikami. I have contemplated sending this recommendation for quite a while. And to be honest, it's quite difficult to describe what you're about to hear in a way that will do it proper justice. So, I just hope... You'll enjoy it. I'm going to be completely honest. Requests like that scare me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> joking aside, let's dive into this. It is a 41 minute song. According to their band camp, they are listed under black metal, experimental black metal, doom metal, drone ambient, and post rock. I'm not sure where all of those collide. So, let's go in with an open mind and see what Hanamale is bringing to the table today. an eclectic combination of sounds.
So we have some sort of sax, some sort of flute, boat strings, all sorts of percussion, but also a drum kit with blast beats and a very static electric guitar in the background. We had some bass movement at the beginning. I can't hear that anymore. We do have this new portal moving guitar line. And then we have some pop punk vocal melodies with heavy use of voice modulation to make them sound a little more robotic. But with a very cluttered production, there is not a lot of space here and the song was already pretty full at the beginning with just the guitar and drums. It's either the sax or the bowed string instrument. Feels like they're playing folk music on top of the uh, metallic chord progression. kind of dancey without all the uh, metal elements to it. We got some piano over here, don't we?
a rather consistent element of this so far is a lack of consistency between ideas. Everything seems to be in its own world. Only vaguely working with that around it simply because of by the fact that they're all playing together. The proximity is the only reason these ideas are heard together, more so than them having anything to do with one another. Wild piano lines. Oh, okay. I, I see how the syncopation works on that hi hat now. really hoping the end of the song makes some of this worthwhile. But it's an interesting parallel to something like uh, Earth's uh, of Golden Faceted or something like that. Maybe it's just Golden Faceted. A type of uh, very static drone, but this is more of a maximalistic drone whereas Earth had more of a minimalistic drone.
trying to enjoy everything on a singular level, I don't think that's the best way to do it. And the few times that I've just allowed the whole thing to wash over me, I think it makes more sense, but I'm not finding that enjoyable either. See, this is a cool mode. We've got our cello giving us this little pulse in the background. The piano, a nice melody alongside that. That's not really working too well alongside the piano, but whatever. what this section's aiming to do. It's just, it never quite clicks for me. It's very avant-garde though, and there's... I feel like any one of these concepts could be expanded into something that works in a more traditional sense. There's good chops in writing here, but they're aiming for that experimental sound, which is gonna go over my head every time. Even this section was tends to be a, a bit more cohesive. With our guitars doing the black metal thing, we got the drums doing the black metal thing. There are these percussive hits that were kind of oddly, you can, they're off to the left. You can hear them there, there some of them are oddly placed. There's always something that feels like it comes from a different song. I do like the vocals here though.
I get the feeling that they're afraid for any portion of the song to explore space in any way. I feel like this section would be infinitely more interesting without that constant bass and snare in the backgrounds. You have a cool noisy guitar over here sometimes. It, it kind of feels like there's some parts that are older ideas being brought back. But the idea of motif is really difficult in something like this, as chaotic as it is. Well, it, I'm, what I mean is the, it's difficult for the motif to mean something. When nothing really seems to mean anything in the first place. Good chops on the flautist over there. where it feels a little more spacious. There's still a very, very low compressed alternating bass kick and snare. Just let this section be. I really wish they would. I suppose that removes the drone element from it. Every every section so far has had something that drones in it.
there's something here I really want to like. There's something so pop emo to the chord progressions, the vocal melody, the auto tune. the bonker stuff.
There is a method to the madness. Interesting ambient sounds, maybe. Again, another space that feels like it should be a moment to breathe, a juxtaposition, a contrast to everything else, and it is, except for that driving energy of the alternating bass and snare. terrible here.
<laughs> it sounded like the drummer was trying to go in a different direction and was like, screw it, back to the alternating snare and bass. We got a little didgeridoo too. Yeah. Okay. So, coming at this tr this track, this album. Technically, it's a one track album. I'm of two minds. First of all, is approaching them on their own terms. They have created wall of sound, post metal, black metal drone music. Did they do that well? Yes, I think generally speaking, the song is very oppressive. It is constantly assaulting my ears. There's so much going on at any given time. And yet there's also a very, very static element to it. It is simultaneously dynamic and repetitive. It's interesting that they can smash all that together with the plethora of other noises they have in here to give it that avant-garde feeling. But the other mind I am is of a casual mind. Listening to this song and all I can think about throughout a majority of it is how I probably would have done things differently. There's a lot of sections in here that I really liked. Individual moments or a few parts of a section. I really love almost any time the vocals came in. They had a very... Uh, pop punk, pop emo, melodic styling to them. The heavy use of the auto tune sounded great. It reminds me of bands older. I'm going to date myself a little here, like Select Start. Um, and we tended to have emo adjacent chord progressions in those sections as well. I generally liked those moments. And we had one in the 30 minute range for quite some time. But it was still just two or three of the instruments at any given moment when there's so many more happening simultaneously. And it was like I enjoyed the section despite what it was doing. And that never feels good.
And so that's where I sit. There's a lot of parts in here where I would have pared things down, where I would have taken it in a different approach, where I would have utilized a couple of portions and dismissed the rest and added in different things, uh, portions to make it more congruent within itself, to make ideas bounce off of each other better, to grow the song in a direction that feels cohesive rather than antagonistic. But any one of those decisions, much less every way that I would have altered this or would have given feedback in some sort of uh, you know, draft feedback moment, it would have been in an effort to drastically change the song into something that it isn't. And there isn't really a lot of stuff that I've heard like this. In fact, maybe not anything. I can certainly see where like certain parts are like this band or that genre, but overall, has anybody heard anything quite like this? Uh, specifically, the combinations of melodies and harmonies and timbres, it's, it's quite eclectic. I would hate to have ever have said this should be changed to something more palatable because it would be removing a unique work of art from the world. But there's definitely a little voice inside somewhere that says there's some really freaking cool stuff in here. I just wish it wasn't buried underneath everything else. And I would have loved to have heard a bit of a progressive pop rock or pop punk album out of this. There's certainly 30 minutes worth of music individual, you know, split up into individual tracks here that would make for a very cool experimental album within that realm too. They have a really great concept of melody and flow um, and how to add interesting flares to an already established and well-tread genre. But again, it would definitely not be what this is. And would that be worth removing this from the world? I don't think so. At a point in time, I was going to say that the most damning comment I could make about this is that it is exceptionally repetitive and static for a song as dynamic as it is. But from a certain perspective, that's not damning at all. That's the highest praise you can give. This is experimental avant-garde drone. It is all of the moving dynamic ideas and putting in 30 or 40 different timbres in here across so many different genres, and yet they still found a way to make that feel static. It is a perfect execution on the idea. I think the statement works from both perspectives. Would I have enjoyed this more if it were more dynamic? Yeah. There's a lot of times when I was like, get rid of that drum and bass, uh, the, the snare and bass kick idea. That drone is ruining a section, but without it, the song becomes less droney. And I think it really depends on what their their intentions were. Do they want to make a drone song? If, if yes, they nailed it. But I often felt like the song was held back by the need to have a drone everywhere. And yet again, I'm of two minds. From intention, this is probably spot on. I can't really say anything negative about it. From personal experience and my enjoyment of it, there's a lot of places I would have liked to remove some of their intent and, and have altered it in a bit. So, yeah, I mean, just like, it's tough to be a critic and a casual music lover simultaneously because I do frequently hold these two ideas. You know, I try not to casually have the idea of that was that was trash, that was garbage. But, you know, certainly being a composer myself and somebody who has, uh, you know, given feedback on other people's projects, I'm always in that state of mind of what would I have done here? And my decisions are just so different from the way they went. But my decisions, as I stated earlier, would have made a very, very different project. Now, the one large idea that I think is going to be make or break for most people is the noise, the cacophony of it all. 
at, at times, I think it can work. In fact, there were some moments around minute 32 with those auto-tuned vocals and the emo chord progression and the black metal drums and then the random <laughs> violins and saxophones and pianos and anything else that was going on over here underneath the, the core vocals. I think that it kind of worked. Either that or I was developing an ear for the noise of it all. But it wasn't consistent for me. So I think a lot of people are going to listen to this and hear the, the drum kit, the auxiliary percussion, the bass, the guitars, the plethora of instruments, the, the, uh, the, the white noise, the static, just the compression that exists throughout this whole thing, the atmospheric sounds, the field recordings, the vocals, all of it coming together and just be overwhelmed by it all. Other people are going to listen to all those layers and absolutely fall in love. And like I said, it's it's the make or break point. It's also the core component of the song, aside from the alternating bass snare, or bass kick and snare, which is the defining instrumental idea throughout the entire 41 minutes that was present 99% of the time. The cacophony and noise is the other characteristic of the song that is ever present, regardless of what instruments, what melodies, what ornamentation, what harmonies, what sounds are being played the wall of sound you look over there at the volume meter and it doesn't move it doesn't bounce it is just static at the top of the screen telling you the song is at full volume for 40 minutes the wall of sound is in full effect throughout a vast majority of the song there are four maybe moments when we dip down away from that the volume is still rather loud but the layers get stripped back but they are far and few between this is a song i think that is designed to sonically overwhelm you however not with noise and chaos in in a sense as i mentioned towards the end of the song there is a rhyme or a reason to the madness. Despite being the wall of sound, despite having so many disparate parts, I grew to find the song isn't so noisy. Chaotic, yes, but noisy? Maybe not. There's always two or three foundational ideas, usually sitting on the bottom or the outside of the sound. These are atmospheric things or chordal things, usually a bassier tone and the drum kit. Then we have usually the, the noise, the fuzz, the static, whatever instrument is going to give us the consistent sound off on the right. This was very frequently a very distorted guitar. Occasionally above that, we will have a chord, pression, uh, a chord progression guitar. We had a couple of different tones for this, but it was the guitar that sat above the singular droney noise and provided a chord progression, usually three chords across four bars where the third chord is repeated on bar three and four that happened very frequently it wasn't even until the end of the song when we started moving to four bar uh, four chord progressions off on the left is where the noise happens well the avant-garde happens i suppose over here is the noise over here on the left is where you get your violin melodies your well, we did have piano off on the right one time, but uh, your violins, your saxophones, your lead guitars, anything that has a moving melodic idea is always present here on the left. And then our vocals are center alongside our drums that are kind of sit on the bottom. And that's how many of these sections are made up. Foundation, noise, ornamental melody, lead melody. It actually makes a lot of sense as you spend more time with it. 
Now, that's not to say, though, again, that the song isn't chaotic. It just kind of becomes less noisy for me over time. Because there certainly is chaos to this song. Uh, I mentioned it right at the beginning, that there's usually, like, two uh, ideas going on over here. Flutes, violins, all sorts of stuff, uh, saxophones. And they're also sometimes doing counterpoint to a vocal that's in the middle. And all of that is pushed up against a... Uh, chord progression over here, and then the constant 16th notes in our foundation. There's a lot of information being presented to the listener at any moment in time, and not all of it is working in a way that it's positively... Uh, it doesn't positively affect the things going on around it. That is to say that harmonically... There might be some clashing. Rhythmically, there's a ton of things in here that clash. Melodically, the counterpoint that we get might not play off of each other very well. There certainly isn't an idea where it feels like it's handcrafted, where a melody will exist for a little bit, another instrument will fill in some rest for it, and then the melody will come back, and then we'll fill that in, or where the two instruments feel like Rhythmically, they might be playing off of each other in something that feels a bit close to a hocket. Basically, what I'm saying is that every single melodic line, whether it is the vocals in the center or any of the plethora of stuff we get on the left, it seems like it was independently written from any of the other melodic instruments and then haphazardly placed as blocks into the song in that oh we have a 16 bar idea for the sax well we'll socket that in there oh we also have this uh eight bar idea from the violin well we'll put that on the the back uh, you know the last eight bars of that sax part do they go together i don't know we'll find out when we hit play <laughs> and then that's where the discussion ends if it fits together or not doesn't really matter that's what creates the chaotic element to the song not everything fits together well with what's placed around it. There is a general harmonic resonance throughout. I think for the most part, everything plays well within the chord progression that's presented in the song, which the chord progressions are always limited for like four or five minutes of the song. We had a static chord being played, no progression at all. And other times, as I mentioned, we have three chord and four chord progressions. Not a lot of movement there either. It's really easy to stay within a key when the key is not really enforced too heavily by the chord progression itself. It allows for some leeway, some coloring outside the lines without feeling too odd about it. The only clash that we would get harmonically is if two notes are played that outside of key don't really work too well, which didn't happen too often in here. I don't know if that's just because of how quickly a lot of the ideas are moving, or maybe there is a little bit more handcraftedness to the layering than I uh, initially thought, but... It would be like putting a D and a D sharp next to each other. There's going to be a lot of clashing due to how little variance there is between those two notes. Um, but yeah, it never really happened too much. So yeah, I guess a lot of it just comes down to melodic clashing and rhythmic clashing there's being a lot of stuff going on at any one time and of course all of that being paired with the massive wall of sound foundation that goes around it that makes it feel very overwhelming now i did mention uh, a phrase during the reaction i said that it felt like we were bringing ideas back from earlier in the song but that it wasn't a really strong sense of motif because nothing ever means anything for it to mean something different in a new context. And what I mean by that is that most of the melodies that would be recognizable enough to bring back as a motif, which pretty much excludes any of the atmospheric stuff, the chord progression stuff, the drone, it really is just the melodic stuff we're going to get over here um, on the violins, the saxophones, the flutes, uh, you know, those instruments. They never really represent anything to me except chaos, because they're usually brought in in ways that are antagonistic to the other elements of the song, as we just discussed. 
And so if the majority of ideas all are antagonistic, they're all chaotic, that is how I interpret 99% of the melodic ideas in here, and then they're brought in later on as a return to an idea in a new context, and they're still representing chaos and antagonism, the context might technically have changed, but the motif hasn't been reevaluated through the recontextualization. It still represents and means the exact same thing it did previously, which is a bit of a weak use of motif in my books. Usually the idea is to bring it back either to recontextualize against a change in narration, which is how it's utilized in a lot of musicals. Uh, that's usually paired with a lyrical motif that does have a melodic element to it, but where the words mean something new after a big change of, of character, right? Something like that. Um, but it's usually brought back to put into a new context, maybe with new instrumentation around it, maybe with a duet, some sort of counterpoint. Maybe it put, maybe it gets um, transposed into a new key, so that has a different feel to it. None of that happens here, though. Nothing new comes out of the reuse, so I don't really have anything to to say about. It. I think it's neat to bring the ideas back, but it feels purposeless. It feels like it's done just to do it more so than because the song can benefit from it. However, it is one of those ways of working harder, working smarter, not harder in the realm of composition, so I don't want to put too much shade on it. I just It just never really clicked with me uh, as something that benefited the song in any way particularly because the song feels rather consistent to me throughout. It's just chaos. Um, do I have anything else I want to add to this? Yeah, I don't know. I think that about wraps it up. I mean, it's... I'm glad I've listened to it. It is very experimental. It's doing a lot of cool things, even if I don't think they all sound great. Uh, and I will always support people who want to push music in new directions. Did I hate my time with it? No. There were definitely some points where I feel like I got a little bored. I hope I didn't really look that way. But yeah, I mean, there were some portions in here. I was like, okay, we've heard this for six minutes. Can we try something new now? <laughs> uh, and there are some parts, even in the, the back half of the track, that clicked with me a little better. Uh, but I think overall, I'm sort of just ambivalent to it. It's intriguing on some levels, but not anything I'd ever want to return to. So, yeah, I think that's where I sit with it. There's still a lot of cool sounds in here, though. Uh, you know, pushed underneath some of the other stuff, and... I wouldn't mind arranging it, though. I think that might be fun. Pulling out some key stuff. Kind of removing some of the things that I'm not too keen on. Not really changing too much, but focusing. Changing the focus of the song into uh, onto different elements of it. Like shifting the focus away from the wall of sound noise to something more focused on harmony and melody utilizing everything in the song, not adding anything new to it, just changing where the spotlight is. I think I could create something very interesting out of that. I don't know, I might get in contact with them and see if they have sheet music, but something that tells me with a project like this, they probably don't. <laughs> just the gut feeling I have. Let me see if there's any lyrics for this, and then we'll wrap the video up. All right, I can't find any lyrics. However, I did decide to look up Amaterasu Omikami, and I actually knew part of that because there is a shortened version of the phrase, which is just Amaterasu, which is the goddess of the sun in the Shinto religion. I did not know that the official title, though, has the Omikami at the end of it. Um, often considered the uh, the chief deity of the Shinto pantheon, um, 
She is the ruler of the heavenly realm and is one of the three precious children or the three important offspring of the creator god, Izanagi. So, what does any of that have to do with the song? I have no idea, but I think it's really interesting to um, kind of get into people's minds about that. That would probably be my first question if I did an interview with, with, the, with the group. Uh, you know, what is it about this god and their their mythology that led to the creation of this song? Or, or what parts of the song were influenced by the mythology? Because I don't really see much of a comparison between the two, but this is also a very cursory glance at the god, and I don't really have a strong understanding of the music other than chaos. So... Yeah, I don't have anything else to add on to that, but, you know, as usual, these are just my thoughts on uh, Hanamale's Amaterasu Omikami. What did you think of it? Is there anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Maybe you have your own thoughts, opinions, and perspectives about this track. Toss all of that down in the comments. Let me know what's up. Above the comment section in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, that wraps it up for today. I'll be back tomorrow, though, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC, as usual. We're going to continue on with this week's theme of that good black metal. <laughs> Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.